Watertight integrity is very important to any vessel, not just a fishing vessel. When a fishing vessel goes to sea, he tends to open up his hatches rather than closing them down because he has to put fish below and men have to access the lower decks. A merchant vessel would batten down his hatches until he received himself in a, in a safe port, therefore he could open up safely. Because of this, we have to be aware of different things like changing weather conditions, sea conditions, of wave height, and water getting onto the upper deck. For that reason, we need to be aware that we need to shut down these hatches in foul weather to stop water getting to the lower decks and causing the stability problem with the vessel. Down the harbour about 6 a.m. that morning, and uh, there wasn't a ripple in the water. It was so calm, and just uh, one of those days. It's a pleasure to be at your work. But uh, as as the day went on, <coughs> uh, the wind got stronger, and the sea got rougher. There was some water swishing around my feet, <coughs> and I uh, turned on uh, all my, my bilge pumps manually. I saw the water running over the the starboard side of the boat, and what I thought would never happen, I, I knew my boat was going down and I was in big trouble. Just before I was rescued, I um, turned my back to the waves and uh, starting to lose consciousness. And uh, I remember just crying out, you know, I can't do this anymore. There are several reports from the MEIB about vessels not having watertight integrity and the vessel has sunk. There are also some good reports of vessels that had good watertight integrity, however have capsized and it slowed down the sinking of that vessel and allowed the crew time to abandon ship. Some of the problems on fishing vessels in the past have been poor hatch covers, not, not fastened down right, not sealing correctly, um, watertight doors actually not being watertight, just weather tight, and we need to monitor that carefully and service them and maintain them doors. All vessels should maintain their watertight integrity by ensuring that their watertight hatches, doors are closed when the vessel is at sea. If the hatch is not closed, it won't keep the water out. There is a level of complacency in the fishing industry with, with everybody. Um, all the times the boats go in and everyone's happy, everything's working all right. People rely more and more on automatic bilge pumps are put in which are fine all the time that they're working okay. The minute the automatic stops and you haven't realised your shaft's leaking, you've suddenly got a boat full of water. The automatic pump doesn't take over. The bilge alarm, because it hasn't been working for months and months, because the automatic's been working, doesn't work. It builds up this problem and all of a sudden you've got a boat full of water. Bilge alarms are very important on any vessel, but specifically on fishing vessels because we have things like ice down below that is melting, so we already have water within the vessel that is melting, and we need to pump that water out as it, as it melts in the fish room. We can also have fish washers and things like that on board where water can get down below, and we need to remove that water. And if we get a burst pipe in there, we need to know as soon as possible so we can tackle that problem and save the vessel from sinking. Pipe work on a fishing vessel should be checked regularly because a small pipe, even an inch pipe or a two inch pipe at the water line can let in a small amount of water, but if the same size pipe is lower down in the vessel, the water pressure is much greater and therefore you can flood a whole lot quicker. My experiences and a sort of bad experiences were one day returning from a refit, we took a lot of water in the engine room and one of the pumps hadn't been connected to the engine, so the salt water cooling pump was filling the boat up you could noticeably tell that the boat was rolling a lot slower and got the suspicions up straight away and was then able to check the bilges and as it happened in the end we ended up stopping the engine and uh, getting the tow back to get the boat pumped out. Uh, pipe work on your ship, your overboard discharge, your feeds to the engine, bilge suctions uh, all corrode over the period of time especially weld joints and where you've got a rubber hose join in a mild steel. Uh, very often you get leakages and even the pipes will fall in half with bad corrosion. It needs to be checked. 
even though it looks shiny and painty on the outside, quite often the inside is rotted right away with electrolysis. Pipe work should be checked at regular intervals. Particular attention should be paid to flexible couplings to ensure that two stainless steel hose clips are attached to flexible couplings. Electrical bilge alarms should be at the lowest point in the bilge where it's accessible to be able to maintain that equipment. So although we have that fitted, we have to maintain it and make sure it works and we check that equipment. Also, if we have small boats that some have electrical pumps in there, they should be sighted at the lowest point possible so that you can check it and maintain that equipment. It is important to check your manual pump or your hand pump at regular intervals because if you do not and you need it, it needs to work. Bilge water should be kept to a minimum in any vessel to reduce free surface, to reduce shift of weight. It's just good seamanship. Inlets and outlets in pipework should be closed every time the vessel comes into port and the engine is closed down. Seacocks are, are on a fishing vessel can be very low down and therefore inaccessible to a, a fisherman if he has to lift the hatches to get to them. What we advise fishermen then is to do is to make an extension for them handles so they can be easily reached in an emergency. Sea cocks and valves on all fishing vessels should be checked that they close and open fully on a regular basis. A damage control kit on a fishing vessel or any vessel is very important so if you get a leak or you're in a collision you can shore up the hole or the split in the vessel to either slow down the water or stop it altogether to stop the vessel foundering. Some of the things you need in your damage control kit will be things like hammers, wedges, bungs, tape, sealing tape, uh, extra rubber hose, jubilee clips and fathering sheets. Next time you go to sea, regularly inspect critical pipework, rudders, stern glands, bilge alarms for any defects and replace if necessary. Regularly check the hatches, doorways, scuttles and make sure they are correctly sealed even in good weather. Always have a damage control kit behind.